Record the call. Okay, we are recording now. Perfect. Here we go. Hello, my name is Ethan Hewlin. Like you, I live in a world that never stops moving. Also, like you, I have stories. These are my stories, the true stories of a tryhard. Welcome back to True Stories of a Tryhard. I'm Ethan Hewlin, and if you haven't noticed, I've been on a bit of a hiatus lately. Um, that's mainly for uh, mental health slash school reasons, but I am back. And as I pointed out on Twitter, please follow me if you aren't already, that there is something big coming, and she's right here. Please welcome my new co-host, Claire Kraske, formerly of Forgot to Unpack. Hi. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ethan sort of reached out to me to co-host the show because I realized he realized that he didn't want to do it all by himself and I wanted to help as much as I can because I realized it is a passion project for him. And I really appreciate it Claire. So uh, you were on the show I believe earlier this year or sometime last year. Uh, So for those of uh, the listeners who haven't listened or haven't listened in a while just kind of reacquaint yourself and this will be kind of a getting to know you uh, episode. So um so who is uh, Claire Kraske? Yeah, so I am a junior in college. I I don't know. I struggle with depression and occasional anxiety. Um, I went through it, my parents' divorce when I was young, and that really affected me a lot mentally. So I think a lot of things have led to me to get to this point. Good. Well, not good that those things happen, but good that you're comfortable enough talking about them. Uh, so that way we can have you know productive conversation because I have uh, I, I think there's going to be some good things that are happening here and I really appreciate you being willing to come and help me out. Yeah, of course I understand sort of needing to reach out and get help for something you really want to do. Yeah, so kind of speaking of which, that's actually been something over the course of my life that's been really hard for me to do. Is that something that you'd be able to relate to? Yeah, um, I remember that I'll always in school, I would have issues reaching out for help and even just like going to the people around me asking for help. Um, I think like two years ago, I barely wanted to go to my own counseling center because I was realizing I don't want to get help. I am fine being alone and getting my own mind under control without anyone judging me for it. Sure. And where did that, uh, where did that end up for you? I think I just had to swallow my pride and just deal with it. Um, yeah, yeah, I've been I think, there. Yeah, I've definitely gotten humbled uh, since I started living on my own, just because of how much I've had to learn how to do, and I don't necessarily know how to do everything that's involved with living on your own yet, just because I haven't done it for a while. I mean, I can only imagine what it's like for you, but yeah, living alone is interesting. I. It's, it's great in some parts where I'm just like, oh, yeah, I am a functioning adult and I can get all of my chores done and be in a, in a good place. And then mm-hmm. I just realized I don't want to do any of that. I yeah. just sort of am tired after school and after work. And I just want to microwave a dinner and just hop back into bed. But That is a mood and a half, let me tell you, because if, if you're anything like me, you work more on the weekends than weekdays. So yeah just because of school and stuff. So I'll just come home you know, after work. It's about nine o'clock, nine 15, depending on the night. And I'll just want to just melt into the couch. Yeah. I, even when I do work during the week, I am getting home at like nine 15, nine 30 ish. And I'm just like, I have homework to do, but I just, I don't want to do any of it. I just want to unwind from the day and just go to bed if I can, but college. Unfortunately. Now, Claire and I both have, I would consider to be somewhat difficult majors that we're both pursuing. Uh, I'm a computer science major and Claire is an actuarial science major, which um, I didn't really know what exactly that was until I met Claire, because it's just not something that most people really come across, even though my, my mom's side of the family did insurance for a really long time. So I'm surprised I didn't know. Yeah. Every time I meet someone new, I sort of have to give them a little spiel of like, what am I doing? How long will it take me to get there? Um, And I get some weird ideas of what they think actuarial is. 
someone thought it was working with birds and someone thought it was working with uh, mortuary science. Hmm. That, okay. I mean, I don't know where they would have gotten that from, but people... I, I don't either. It's... I don't get people. That's just not something I'm good at. Yeah, I don't, I don't even try to get some people. I, I don't know. I sort of stick with my people and then people come and go. If they decide to stick with me, then I'll stick with them. Yeah. I mean, that's just kind of how it's worked out for me too. I, I don't know, but a really big fear of mine is like losing friends in some way. So like part of me is like, I just want to keep these people around for as long as I can, but sometimes things are just out of my control. And that's, uh, that's where the anxiety really like kicks into gear because when I can't control things. That's when I freak out. Yeah. And I understand that. That is a really big struggle that I sort of dealt with. I went through a lot of that in high school and I just sort of realized that people who care about me and who I care about, they'll stick around. Um, if someone doesn't exactly jive with certain aspects of me or if I don't jive with big parts of them, it's just not going to work out. And it took a lot of time to realize people are different and people move on and people move at different paces than you. Yeah. I mean, that's just something that again, like you have had to learn over time just because I have, you know, you meet different people over the course of your life. And throughout that, you tend to realize that, well, at least when I was younger, I thought that everybody in the world was like me, right? Just a whole world for a little little Ethan's not necessarily in like appearance or anything, but like personality. Um, but the older I get, the more I realize that that is quite the opposite. There are some people that are like me. I think you and I are pretty similar, but the more people I meet, the more I realize how different people can be. And I think that's actually a really cool thing. Yeah. I think, I think realizing that people's differences are actually their strengths is a very important thing that I've learned in the previous few months at least i i think you have to value other people's differences and you can't all think the same what did uh, what happened there like what made you realize that um i don't know if there's like a story behind it i just sort of i was put in a situation with my friends and i i realized that i thought very differently from them and instead of realizing that that would separate us i realized that brought us together and that those differences sort of made us more unique and sure yeah yeah i mean if you think about it if that really was the case and everybody in the world was exactly like each other that'd be pretty boring don't you think just because yeah. of you know how repetitive things would get mm -hmm. yeah I, mean, not, I think yeah yeah i mean we're not robots we're not meant to serve one purpose you know we're human beings we're complicated we have hopes dreams aspirations virtues things like that and it's actually really interesting to examine those sorts of things yeah i i think being in college really shows how many different hopes and dreams and aspirations people have especially at this time in their life um because i've met so many different people here and none of them are on the same path despite being all in college some of them might drop out in the next three weeks. Some of them might be going to grad school and being a lifetime student. And as long as they're finding what their purpose is, that's all that matters. Yeah. And I think to a certain extent, we have to find what our purpose is. But I think in time, everybody comes to have a better idea of what that looks like. I mean, I definitely know more about myself and what I want than I used to. Oh, I don't. I think I've I'm more lost now than I've ever been in my entire life. I, I I don't know. I think a lot of changes have happened in my life recently. And a lot of the things, a lot of my confidence has sort of decreased in the past few weeks, few months. And that sort of just made me question, where am I going? Is this really what I want to do with my life? And how quickly am I on that path to get there? So is that just kind of made you question your whole like reason for even being where you are yeah I I did I had to do a lot of soul searching I hate that term but soul searching I mean um, it's what you did yeah I I don't know it's evaluating what made me feel hopeless and what gives me hope for my future so what are some of those things um 
I think the concept of being financially stable and having friends that would support me, whatever place I go to, I think that's a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, that I think that when adults, you know, move out of, um, move out from their parents' home and, you know, whether college, trade school, or just jumping straight into work, like once you start working in some form, it's not always easy to make those friendships. Like how many people do you know that are adults, maybe like our parents' age, who still like meet new friends? I don't know. That's a really big question. And I think it's probably more than I think. I think I'm pretty, I'm underestimating the amount of people that are going through that right now. Yeah. I mean, I agree, but like, I don't know. It just seems like the older you get, the more you have going on, the less time you have to devote those those, to those kinds of relationships. Yeah. I think it comes down to what you value your time with. You, you don't really care to do things that you're just sort of halfway committed to when you're that age. You sort of find what you care about and commit to those things. Sure. I mean, it's, I think I've said this before, but you have time for what you make time for. And there's just a lot of ways that people can spend their time and they have to prioritize what exactly is the most important thing to them. Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense. And I do think I see it in some of the adults in my life. Which, you know, doesn't always perfectly line up with how things were when, you know, people were younger, just because of several factors. I mean, one being personality changes, because I know I'm not the same person I was when I was a kid. And I think that's probably a good thing. Yeah, I think I would hate myself if I was the same kid. I, I, if I had the same personality as when I was a kid, I was not the greatest, but I, yeah, I don't know. It would be interesting to see how I'd fare if I had my child personality. I just think I was stupid, at least for, well, well, growing up book wise, I was really smart, but when it came to um, common sense or street smarts, I was not exactly um, the brightest bulb in the chandelier. So um, I had a lot of stupid stuff. Um, like one time I fell off a playground and cut up half my face on wood chips. Not on purpose, but it happened because I was trying to impress people and that didn't always work out in my favor. I don't know. I don't think I did anything stupid as a kid. I was sort of a sheltered kid. I sort of stayed inside and read books for the most part. Oh, I definitely did too. It's just that was more more when I was younger, when I was just probably from the ages of five to 13 is when I was really kind of more sheltered and more, more introverted. I definitely still am an introvert. That's just where I get my energy from is being alone. But I'm more comfortable being around people, especially people that I don't know, which I know is not always easy. And, you know, I still have that social battery that does get depleted. So yeah, I, I, I relate. I'm a very introvert. I, I get drained after about two hours worth of networking or meeting new people. I, I don't feel drained after hanging out with my friends or anything, but if I have to continuously talk about myself or meet new people who I may not have anything in common with. I just, I don't feel it after a certain amount of time. Hey tryhards, Ethan here. I want to talk to you guys about Patreon. Patreon is a donation service, a monthly subscription service where you donate money to me to support the show, support uh, the growth of it, whether that means merchandise or more podcasts or other things of that nature and i would really appreciate if you guys will be willing and able to give just a little bit of whatever extra money you may have because while the show will always be free for everyone to listen um the way to make it isn't and i'm in college and things are expensive so i'd appreciate any little amount that you're able to give so thank you for donating and thank you even more for listening. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard so much that people like to talk about themselves. I don't like talking about myself. It is I the worst. It. It's so horrible. I don't like talking about myself. It just, it makes me feel selfish. I don't know if that's how it is for you, but it makes me feel selfish to talk about myself. Cause like, you know, I'm trying not to brag without sounding 
like I'm humble bragging, if that makes sense. And it's just, it never ends up the way that probably anybody wants, just because I don't always know how to translate things. Yeah, I I think I feel that exact same way. I just sort of, I don't know where the line stops between actually bragging and just talking about myself. Yeah. I So I just sort of don't talk about, about myself at all. Yeah, and I definitely feel the whole like networking thing. Like we had a career fair at my college a couple of weeks ago. That was um, a time, to say the least. Like going up to all these different tables and talking to representatives from different companies about myself and what I'm doing. It just feels like I'm being grilled at the dinner table by my family, even though these people have never met me, which I think just steps it up a little bit more as far as like, the intimidation factor anyway. Yeah. I, I had a, we had a recruiting session for my, at my college where we had a ton of different interviews all in one day. And then the career fair that following afternoon. And by the end of the day, I was just trained and it was obvious in my career fair interactions because I had visible bags on all of the virtual, um, zoom calls with the recruiters and it just it felt like I was being disingenuous because all of these other potential candidates my classmates enjoy talking to these people and they enjoy shilling themselves to promote themselves to get those jobs and here I am trying to get those exact same jobs and not being able to talk about myself and separate myself yeah it does suck having to I I definitely feel sometimes like I'm not catching up with some of my classmates just because of the way that I am um so yeah I definitely feel where you're coming from there yeah and and just Um, talking about jobs is weird and hard I don't know there's a lot of things I don't know relatable I don't know a lot of things right now (sighs) there's too many unknowns Claire there are too many unknowns in this world yeah it's it's scary scary but uh working with all the math and numbers in my career I sort of realized that unknowns are going to puff up so just feeling how to minimize those risks from them is the biggest thing that I learned so far I mean with what I'm doing unknowns are literally baked into what I do like when you're coding you have variables and those variables can be filled with almost anything you want, depending on what you put them as. And you can change them and you can move them around and put them other places and reference them from other, uh, other programs. And it's just, it is both, it is both orderly and chaotic because there's always a different way to make sure you get what you want. But that's the reason I like it is because I have the dependability of knowing what I need to do, but the how is where things get chaotic. Interesting. Um, yeah, that's actually really interesting to see your perspective on unknowns and computer science. Yeah, and it's just, it comes with the job because we don't always know what people are, what things people are going to be running through the programs that we make. I mean, we can do test cases all we want, but until every test case that we have passes, the program is not ready yet. But um, that actually leads me to something else. Now, listeners, I know you can't see this, but I have a rubber duck. Um it was actually given to me by uh, a mutual friend of ours, and she um, she knows someone who uh, told her about the um, the rubber duck uh, programming connection because back in the day there was a developer who had a rubber duck on his desk, and whenever he got frustrated, he would try to explain the code to the rubber duck to see if he could understand what exactly he was trying to do, and it worked. So um, my friend got me this duck. And she's definitely been getting her uh, fair share of use. Um, listeners, for those of you who don't know, uh, this duck is painted to look like Persephone from the musical Hades Town. Oh, yeah, that's re- that is very accurate to Persephone. Fun duck. But she is a constant reminder of the order and the chaos that I have to deal with. But it's all about balance, making sure you have what you need, when you need it, and you're doing it the right way. And sometimes the right way doesn't always look the way you want. Yeah, I understand that much. Um, don't know where I was going with that sentiment, but that's yeah. okay. Honestly, I woke up. I wake up. Okay, what the heck am I saying? 
I wake up most days not knowing what exactly the day holds. I have a general idea of what's going to happen, but as far as the specifics go, no clue, zero idea. And it's a double-edged sword, really, because that is both scary and inspiring, I guess you could say, because the days are just a ball of clay that you can mold into whatever you want. And sometimes you're going to walk away with a beautiful vase or bowl or cup or whatever you want to make. And sometimes people will just smash the clay, depending on the day you're having. Interesting. Um, I hate that the day is endless possibilities. I, I like knowing what my day holds and I realize that I can't control everything. Yeah. But I think controlling myself and controlling what is in my direct control, whether that's how I get to school or making sure that I eat at least two meals a day, I think that's how I feel more secure in my daily life. Um, the chaos of not knowing what is going to happen is always going to be there for me. But I try and make sure that everything that I can control. I do control. Me too. It's the little things that I can control that put my mind at ease just because of the way my mind works. Because I wouldn't say I like to worry, just that I do about things that sometimes aren't worth worrying over. Hence why I am medicated for anxiety. Um, So love that for me. Um, Anyway, Claire, we are approaching wrap time. So with this inaugural episode, do you want to lead off with plugging where people can find you? Yeah, so you can find me at my name on both Twitter and Instagram. That is C-L-A-R-E-K-R-A-J-E-W-S-K-I. Um, I'm not very active on either of them, but when I do post, it's relatively good. I would say the same, honestly. I probably tweet more than anything else, uh, which you can follow me at ET Phone Home. The O's are zeros, the E's are threes. Um you can find me on Instagram at ethan.t.hewen, that's H-U-L-E-N, and you can uh, find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at True Stories Pod, which hopefully, now that Claire's here, should get a bit more attention. Um, the best way to get the word out about podcasts is via word of mouth and social media, so please, please, please share this with your friends, share it on your social media, and if you post it in some way and tag me, you will get featured on the official podcast accounts. And please feel free to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you all for listening. And until next week, this is Ethan Hewen and Claire Kraske signing off.